Hello YouTubers, welcome back to my shop. It is uh, January 17th, Saturday, about 8.30 in the morning. Got plans to go help a guy move some stuff today. But I'm getting the shop warmed up and I'll load this stove up before I leave so it's nice and toasty when I get back. Been pretty cold this week. The lowest temperature I saw was on my way to work. I was going to work and I saw this guy riding a bicycle. I said, gosh. I looked at the thermometer and it was minus four. He had to be freezing. I hope he had someplace important to be. Uh, if I wouldn't have been on my way to work, I would have probably stopped and asked him if he wanted to ride. Uh, was on vacation last week visiting my uh, son, daughter-in-law and granddaughter down in Savannah, Georgia. Spent a week down there, but spent three, we, well we drove down, spent two days and drove back, to the, so it was four days in Florida at Disney World. That was fun with my three-year-old granddaughter. Um, man, she wasn't afraid of any of those people either. She ran up and hugged them. It was, it was neat. Well, while I was gone, the old redneck prepper sent me a package and uh, just got around to making a video about it. He sent me a knurling tool, which also holds a tool bit on this side if you need to use it. He sent me a, a cutoff blade, uh, 3 seconds, 5 8 by 5, and a couple of nice big, uh, well one nice big one and one nice sized uh, tools for the lathe. Unfortunately, that's the one he sent, and that's the size for my lathe. It's, it's too big. I don't know if you can see it here. It's a bit too big. It's a little loose. So I'll put clean it up and put it in my stores, because someday Someday, I'd like to have a larger lathe. Well, right now, my morning project that I'm starting on is I'm kind of... I'm copying off a Tom Lipton who copied off of someone else. I've got one of these uh, nice little Yankee screwdrivers. And what they did was they put one of these uh, reamers chamfer tools in here. So you just quickly can chamfer a hole that you just drilled. Take the burrs off of it. But unfortunately I don't have any chamfer tools that fit that size. It's pretty small. So the project is I got a piece of half inch in my mill. I've already cut it off, or not half inch, it's one inch material because this is half inch here. Um, I'm gonna drill a half, I'm gonna drill a hole on the end, on the side of that one inch and tap it so I can run a set screw in and then I'm going to drill a half inch hole in the end of it on the lathe and the reason I'm doing the tapped hole first is because if you drill the hole in the lathe let me back up a little bit so you can see my hand signals the lathe if I, I got a three jaw chuck in it and it's just almost impossible to get it lined up perfectly Again, so I'm going to have the hole drilled in the sides for a set screw to lock this in. Then I'll put it in the, the lathe. The mill's over there, the lathe's over there. And uh, drill the hole in it so I can slide this in, tighten the set screw down, and then turn this down to the size that'll fit there. And then I'm going to have to bring this back over the mill and put a little notch in it at the right depth because when you pull this little thing down here let me lock that when you pull that down there's a little flat pin that comes out and then you'd slide this in and then that pat flat pin would come back into the notch and keep this from spinning inside of there so let me get busy here we are getting set up in my mill vise. When you're clamping something round in your vise, 
you want to use one of these V blocks of some kind. Because when you just clamp it like this, you've only got two points of contact, which are very small, and it's just easy to move on you. Where if you use a V block, if you know how to put it in there, and you clamp it in, you've, you've added a point of contact. You've got one point here and two points on your V block, which will hold it nice and tight. And I uh, won't let you spin or anything. Now I'm going to use my edge finder here. To find the edge of the material, the edge of that round. And uh, let me turn the light on here. Let me move you so you can see that thing kick. These edge finders are pretty cool. This bottom part is spring loaded. So when you have it running, you can see it's kind of off center. As you come, run your material up against it. See it's pretty much right on now. And as soon as that thing kicks to the side, right there, you're on the edge of the material. So I uh, zero, put my uh, dial on zero, and what I do is I usually back out and come back in within two thousandths and one thousandths. See, it moves, so I'm going to zero it again, do it again, I'm one thousandths, right on zero, and it kicked. So the edge of this half inch is right against the edge of my round. So what I do now, they come up like that, and I move my material over one, two, so I moved it over a quarter inch. So now the center line, the center line of my drill or my mill is even with the edge of that one inch material. So I zero it again because now I'm right on the edge and I want to come in a half inch. So that's five turns. One, two, three, four, five. Now the center line of my mill is exactly center line of that half, one inch material. Let me move, move you back where you're at, where you were at. From this point right here, to the center is 0.425, 425 thousandths. So I want to come back far enough that uh, when I drill the hole in the end, I can slide this in and turn my set screw down right on one of these flats out here. Um, then I'll face this end off and uh, get it so that this whole shank is sticking out of the end of here so I can turn it. So I'm going to come down here, come off this end, come in about the right amount of distance so I don't have to face too much off. I'll have to measure from the back side to the, where my line's at. And then uh, I'll bring you back when I'm going to drill the hole and tap it. <clears throat> okay, I just ran my errand, um, came back, stoked up the wood stove, it's a little chilly in here, it is now a uh, quarter after ten, I'm all ready to drill and tap my hole here, got my center drill in and let's go. I just need a little bit of a pip mark there, I guess, to keep that number 21 drill bit from wandering.
got my little Eagle Oiler. I'm going to go way down through to make sure I get plenty of threads so I can be threaded at least to the where the half inch hole will be so I don't have to switch to a bottoming tab. I would say that's probably plenty. got here see that green paint that was uh, one of my grandpa's taps and this was his tap wrench is a Sterrett 91A I believe put a little Molly D here I just like that Molly D for tapping got the tap guide into the end so it keeps me nice and straight Seems like it's going in real nice and easy. It's going to be a 1032 because I found a little 1032 set screw in my stash. I think if I go down to where I'm pretty much bottomed out, I'll have plenty of threads in there when I drill that half inch hole in the end. That's it. be able to see this right above the tap you'll see a DVCOX Donald Virgil Cox that was my grandpa I hope you can see it now we're going over to the lathe 